show you an Excel tool that we've been developing to to manage the digital plan of work, and I, th I think it helps to understand what it's trying to do. Um, we'll make a copy of this available, and you're welcome to to try it out for yourself. It's it's in development, so there might be one or two things that are not working 100%, but I think you'll get to the, the, the point here. Obviously, buildings or infrastructure works are very complex, complex things, and so you might say, well, how do you begin to work out a plan? And uh, I think this diagram on the right-hand side explains it quite nicely. Obviously, you would start what's called a project information requirement, or what used to be called the plain language question. So an example of that might be, in order to build this building, we need, you know, we need planning permission. Okay, so that's a that's a plain language question. We need planning permission. That translates into a task. So the task is, yeah, you know, make a planning ap application, and uh, obviously that task requires a set of documents to make the planning application. You need the planning application form. You need the planning report. You need the environmental assessment report, the traffic report. You know, you need a set of drawings, uh, etc. So the task really translates into a set of documents that are required and those documents will be listed in the master information delivery plan and ultimately delivered to the common data environment okay the the task has to be assigned to somebody so somebody will have overall responsibility for that task and um, so that's defined by roles in the in the project um, obviously, elements of that task can be sub-assigned to, to sub-consultants, -consult but somebody should have ultimate responsibility. Um, on the far right-hand side, um, obviously, some of the documents, not all of the documents, but some of the drawings and the schedules, for, for instance, will be produced through BIM. Okay, so, so on the far right, you can see the model is structured using UniClass, I mean, there's an overall complex uh, classification for the, the project. Uh, there's the different entities that, that make up the project. Those entities are broken down into various primary elements, such as walls and floors and roofs, etc. The primary elements are broken down into various systems, and the systems are broken down into products. Okay, so that's the structure of the digital version of the physical building. The all those uh, elements then are the responsibility is is sorry the, the elements are recorded in the model production delivery table what's now called the responsibility matrix and the responsibility is for those elements assigned to various people and once the model is created it would generate the drawings and schedules that will feed into the document set to complete the task okay so I hope that diagram kind of makes sense uh, just to show you this so if you how this tool works but the very first thing you need to do is obviously define your project the main thing here is that every project must have a code because that's used to connect all the files to the project and it should be classified at the complex level so let's say it's a primary school so you select the uh, classification and um, you, de you decide what stage you, you're working at I mean you can fill out all these other details I haven't done that now you have participants that are engaged in the project. So you'd add your participants here. So you've got you know, John Smith architects and Joe Bloggs contractors. The important thing is that each company has a, a code as well, uh, and you can record their name and address there. And you have people. So you know, you've got uh, John Smith, who's the architect. He works for John Smith Architects. Uh, and the impor important thing about the people is to record what role they're going to have in this project. So in relation to information management, you know, so obviously John is going to act as the lead designer for stages two, three, and four, and the project delivery manager and the project information manager. Okay. Then obviously you have the different stages of the projects, and you can add details to the stages. You have predefined roles uh, that come from the standard, but you can add new roles if you like. You've got to assign those roles to the different stages. So we're in concept design stage, but you, you can for each stage you can you can have a, a different uh, role set of roles. Uh, so you do that in roles by stage. The volumes and systems codes are used in the naming of files. You, there's a predefined list there, but you can add 
new ones. Obviously, you've got to add the levels if it's a vertical building or locations if it's a horizontal project. The document types, the codes for the document types are also predefined in the standard, but you can add additional ones if you like. Okay, so tasks, people should, um, I mean, you can structure your tasks any way you like, but you know, I think if you should have some groups so you can manage tasks in an easy way. Like, I normally uh, manage tasks uh, under these kind of headings, you know, to deal with the scope, the program, the costs, statutory approvals, health and safety, environmental, you know, under strategy approvals, you know, you have to have planning and building control. Under building control in Ireland, anyway, we have fire safety certificates, disability certificates, commencement notices under uh, BCAR. You know, so you can structure your tasks. And if, if you, so the planning task, you know, can be as assigned to somebody, the architect. Uh, you can re relate that task to the plain language question or the, the PIR. Uh, you can group them. And, uh, under different sections in the EIR. You can add some notes as you like. You can set the date that that task is required. And you can create a document set that relates to that task. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Okay. Um, okay, because remember each task will relate to a set of documents. So if we just talk about documents for a second, I've created uh, four documents just as an example. There's the architectural model, there's the uh, ground floor plan, there's a planning report, and there's uh, created a document set called planning planning set. So like each um, document obviously has a specific set of codes that relate to the project, which you have to choose. And then for each stage you know, of the project, you can you can record the when it's required, who's checked it, you know, what status it's achieved. OK, so that's the, the documents that you require or the files, if you like, that need to be delivered to the CD. The deliverables are the stuff on the right here, so the structure of the building. Uh, so if I just open that, you can see there's our, our primary school at the complex level. So the primary school complex will be divided into various entities. So you'll have the school building itself. You might have the sports pitches and the vehicle, the, the, the car park. OK, so just as an example, the the building will be broken down into primary elements. So you'll have the foundations, the substructure, the, the structure, the walls, the doors, the windows. OK, so those are the primary elements. And then each element is broken down into various systems. So, you know, the wall you might have two different types of wall systems. You'd have a masonry wall leaf system and you'd have a gyp gypsum plasterboard uh, wall system. OK, so just as an example, then the system is bro bro broken down into various products. So the masonry wall system has render, you know, masonry units, uh, insulation, cavity wall ties, etc. So that's the sort of the way you you break down your building and you think about your building and uh, you know, we, we quite like this kind of tree structure because you can collapse it and, and expand it and you can decide what you want to discuss today and to add something. So if you want to add, uh, let's say, to the doors and windows uh, elements, you click add deliverables. You click on the the, the entity, sorry, the element. Uh, because it's an element, we'll give you the option of either adding a system or product. So if you add the system table and you, know, you can search the tables for, say, door sets. OK, so there's. There's the door set system. I want to add that. So you click on it, add it, and it's added it uh, to the system. And then you can click on the system. And it will give you products and you can do the same thing. Add products to the system. OK, so that's just a way to think about how to break up your your building model and ultimately your, your responsibility. So how this all comes together uh, is in these two tables at the bottom here. Um, oh, sorry, I, meant, I forgot to talk about document sets. So the document set is, I've created a document set here called planning set, and I've added the three documents that I created to that set. So eventually you'll have hundreds of documents, but not all the documents relate to a task. So you just, this, this is just, so we're grouping a set of documents to a, a, a 
task and uh, and then going back to the task. Let's just go back to that planning task. OK, I can relate that document set to that task. That I have to add to task. OK, so now that task will result in that set of documents. OK. So under the standards, you are required to have a responsibility matrix. It used to be called a model production delivery table. It still has the heading there, but uh, it's the same thing. Basically, it's a list of all the elements and systems and products that, that we built up in that deliverables table. And now you have to begin to assign responsibility to those things for each stage. So you, you know, you'd select an element and you'd say, OK, for stage two, uh, we're going to give that responsibility to John Smith Architects and how this we want you know, this amount of detail and this amount of information. Um, you, know, you can add some notes, et cetera. You can also, with this tick box, you can, you can make John Smith uh, responsible for every stage of the project, and you can also apply the stage defaults uh, to that thing going forward. That means you don't have to do it for every stage individually. So what you'll see there is uh, that what it's done is it's it made John Smith responsible for that for each of the different stages, and it's assigned the, the default LOD, LOI uh, for that stage. Uh, just to say about this tool, you, you can't change, you, sh well, you shouldn't change the value in this table itself because this is all coming from a database, uh, the, the data tables behind you. So you just double click on that and change the value. If you want to change something, change it in the dialog box, not directly in this uh, Excel table. Okay, but if you want to, you can obviously save it as an Excel table, uh, save it out as a separate Excel file if you like, or you can uh, create a record document each week as a PDF, you know, at which you present at each of the coordination meetings as, as to monitor progress and keep as a record. So that's the responsibility matrix. The other key document is the master information delivery plan, which effectively is a list of all the files. Now, obviously, this is a a very short list at the moment. It's the three files I had, and they're grouped under models, drawings, and reports, and registers are the, the document sets or document registers. Okay, But again, each file has a series of codes that define the, the, the document. They can have a classification, and you can edit. Again, if you want to edit something, if you want to add a, a date required, just double click there and Add the dates in this dialog box. Don't don't add the date uh, in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so we've. Um, I hope that explains what the digital planner work is. But it's really about defining who is going to do what and when they're going to do it and why they're going to do it, etc. And, and and you're going to result in two key management tools: the the responsibility matrix and the master information delivery plan. And that those tools are things that you should use on a regular basis to control what's happening in terms of your projects. And, and as I said, we'll, we share this Excel file with you and you can play around with it 